Hi, and welcome to the Hancock Creative Podcast. I'm Sean Hancock. And I'm Missy Hancock. And I'm Vinton Bain. Today we're talking about following your heart. Aww. Follow your heart. <laughs> Follow your heart, people. It knows the way. There is a natural way. There's a way that seems natural to you. It's not everyone's natural way isn't the same natural way, but there's a way that seems natural to you. When you are at your just most honest, raw self, <laughs> it's like you're you're seeking to follow your instincts, then there's this thing that is like comes naturally. That is what we're talking about today. When we're talking about following your heart, we are talking about following what is natural, a natural course for you. And there's a lot in this world that seeks to keep us from doing that <laughs> and and a lot of argument against it. And we'd just like to today present the argument for following your natural in intuition. Yeah. So there's something to be said about trusting your intuition. And we're going to try to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a natural intuition as to what is right for us as individuals now now the problem that society has i i believe is that we have a tendency to say what's right for me is right for you and yeah. what's right for everyone else but that's not true so we want to encourage you to find out what's right for you and what is your natural course and we're not talking about you know obviously murder is wrong for everyone <laughs> yeah so there are some things that are our, our good boundaries. Our good, yeah, there's good boundaries for society. There are universal ones that apply to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And so you already know what those are. You already have an understanding of what society expects as far as, you know, being a law-abiding citizen or whatever. But what society will also try to put on you is is restrictions in other ways. And in your heart of hearts, you know that it's not right. So, like, in history, we can look back and we can pretty much say it's self-evident that we're all created equal, right? Yeah. That's even written down. But we also really know that slavery is wrong. Yeah. I mean, I think we can all pretty much agree slavery is wrong. Yes, I would hope so. <laughs> we can also look back in history and and see that women not being able to vote was wrong. Yeah. However... At one point in time, they didn't realize that or they didn't yeah. understand that or they were not willing. I think this is mostly that they were not willing to admit that it was wrong. Well, I think I mean, we watched the what was it? Suffragettes. Is that was that the name of it? It was a great movie. But we watched that this week. So I think that brought up the women's voting. Right. Yeah, yeah. But one thing that really struck us when we were watching it at the end, like, Sean just was like, I mean, I can't even believe that they were thinking that way. And it, it feels like to us, and it may, maybe it's truly humanity has evolved to this point, but it feels like to us that loving human beings who cared for one another and had that give and take in a relationship respected that their wives were <laughs> intelligent. That You know what yeah. I mean? That yeah. in real relationships, there was an understanding that's like, oh, well, I need to but, get her take on this. Yeah. And that was always different at home than it was in public life, I'm sure, you know, yeah. because it's kind of like that oftentimes today. But I think it was a lot of pressure from society to conform, you know, if you will. And then there were the beautiful people that had, you know, it's like, no, my daughter will be as educated as my son. And they, you know, that fought for yeah. it because that seemed right to them. Well, and and they were usually wealthy. If they, yeah. if they were wealthy, they had, they could make choices. And even wealthy women had more of a voice than poor women or whatever. But that's always the case. That's the case today is that the wealthy have a voice and, and the poor if they're lucky, can find a wealthy person to speak for them. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's yeah. just how it has been. And we all know it's self-evident that that's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yet we continue to elect wealthy people to lead our nation. So I believe that there are people who were like, this isn't natural. This is not natural for women to be so disrespected. Right. This is not natural. This is not the way it should be. And so those people fought against the status quo. Those people 
helped make the changes that make the world right. more. And the same as it could be said for slavery and oh yes, and, and lots of things. When we look back in history and we say that was ridiculous that we ever believed that way. Yeah. And today, you know, uh, racism is, is is the same. It's like one day we'll look back and we'll say, well, we can't believe that we we're ever racist. Yeah. We would like to encourage you that you have an intuition. You have a natural leaning. And in our adult lives, since Sean and I have been trying to make our way in this world, there have been things often that were natural to us that were not the status quo, that were not like, this is what you should do with your life and this is the way you should do it. And so we had to many times make decisions going, this is what we're going to do, you know, <laughs> because this is what feels right to us. Yeah, it doesn't and, look sane to anyone else, but that's <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Yeah, and we want to encourage you to believe in yourself enough to, to make those choices, to not let other people dictate um, where you're going with your life because you have your own purpose and you're the only one who can drive it there. On that note, I have a quote, if you would yes. yeah, yeah. like me to share it. It's by Steve Jobs. <laughs> it says, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow know already what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Yes. I would like to just interject here that we're not talking about emotional decisions. Yes. We're talking about your intuitive inner knowledge or whatever you, where you just have a knowing that this is the right thing to do and this is the right path for me yeah and it's not emotional and there is a difference yeah yeah well often it's like emotion can be like well you know what feels natural to me right now bitch slapping you that feels natural <laughs> That's not a good idea. And that is not, that would be following your emotional feelings, right. yeah. not following yeah. your intuition. One of these things is a, is a permanent desire. The other one is a fleeting yeah. here and gone again, emotional thing. So you, you can test it by that. It's like, do I still feel this? Like I want this thing a week from now, a right. month from now, a year from now. Yeah. Have I, yeah. How long have I felt this way? <laughs> yeah, you can often... go, oh, well, I felt this way for years. This is obviously a desire of my heart. Or yeah. you can go, oh, I just felt that way for a minute. This is obviously an emotional <laughs> yeah. reaction to something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't make any life-changing decisions on, a on emotions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think people get into really bad relationships because they're acting on emotion opposed to following their heart. And, Oftentimes, you can avoid the emotional thing by just evaluating what you've always had a desire for, you know, what you've always been, the, the direction you've always been pulled toward. Yeah. Well, okay. So, I'm just going to showcase my psychic abilities right now. Mm. And I just want to say, no, it really does no, seem I don't think of. it's funny. I believe you. <laughs> okay. So, when I was a little girl, I remember telling my mom. I don't, well, actually, I don't remember telling my mom. I just remember knowing. And I, I, my mom says she remembers me telling her this. But I remember knowing that I was going, for one, I was an artist. I always knew I was creative. I was, but the psychic thing is, I remember knowing I'm going to marry a dark-haired artist. Now, one could say that, I mean, I was in second grade. And I remember, like, totally checking out Rodney Barber in front of me. And seeing if he could draw during art class, and because I thought he was a way cute little dark haired boy, and he did not draw worth a flip. And I was like, I guess he's not my man. <laughs> I don't think that I'm going to marry him. Of course, this was not relevant little... at seven, but. <laughs> Well, no, but, but you were exercising what we're talking about. Right? Not. But, but I use that. that he is, could have been one of those artists that were not that's you know, true. illustrators. But exactly. The, the, yeah. It that's was, a good, good indication. <laughs> but that's, that sounds very silly. But when Vinton was talking, saying that earlier, that of it being an emotional or it being how long have I felt this way? It's like sometimes you can go back to childhood and go, I mean, in fact, I would say often. You know, the things that are in you just 
dying to come out, you can see their thumbprints in your childhood <laughs> by yeah. your fascinations, yeah. by the things that you were interested in. So that can be a guide. And it can sometimes be something that you didn't recognize as a child, but you can look back on and connect dots yeah. and be like, oh, well, I was really into Legos because I have a desire to be an architect. Yeah. But you wouldn't notice that as a kid. You're just like, you're playing with Legos. But later, if you find that desire and you need to build buildings still, and you're like, well, maybe I should do something with this, mm -hmm. then you can connect those dots. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think a, an indication is to really know thyself, to look at your your own inner life yeah. and see what makes you happy. Where are you pulled? What direction are you pulled? I think a lot of times people will have a career in something they're not very interested in and it brings an income, but yet they'll volunteer doing something that makes them happy. Mm -hmm. And that's okay if that's what people want. But a lot of times their career is blocking them creatively and it may be better as far as their life, you know, bringing them enjoyment. It may be better if they can find a career in the field that they're volunteering in. And that's not necessarily always going to be the case. But sometimes when we need to make a career change, we'll do something more drastic in our in our personal life or something when really we're just unhappy because we have a job that we hate. And so I think that what we really need to be focusing on is evaluating ourselves, who we are, and looking at um, what makes us happy and looking at where are we going to be fulfilled uh, ultimately and design our path accordingly. There is an excerpt from a Mary Oliver poem that I actually love, and the poem is The Summer Day. But the line that I love so much, and I, I've painted signs of it because it makes me so happy, is, tell me, it's the last line, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And I think that the reason we want to talk about this, and, and I hope that it's not, doesn't feel redundant to you as listeners, because I know we talk about the same kinds of things a lot, but it's because we are constantly faced with the status quo. We're constantly faced with people saying, you need to do this, you need to do that. You, you know, other people giving you opinions, other people giving you advice, your bills giving you advice in the sense that, oh, I have all these bills, crap. I need to find, I just need to do this thing, whether I like it or not. I just want to say you have to believe in yourself. You have to listen to that natural instinct, that natural intuition that is bubbling and burning in there, wanting to express itself. And it might not be your career for a while. We're not trying to like say, quit your own job. We're just saying you have one wild and precious life. Live it, live it, live it, live it in a way that is fulfilling to you. And I think we get on autopilot and that's not where any of us need to be. We need to be embracing each day and saying, what is it today that I'm going to bring to the world? What am I, what do I have to offer today? And there's so many people telling you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. <laughs> And so there's a wonderful line. I heard it years ago in a speech and I loved it. And it's, you shouldn't shit on yourself. And of course I loved it because it's, yeah. Sounds like shit. Sounds like shit. So that's fine <laughs> to me. You know, I, I enjoy. You shouldn't should on yourself. Yes. In case somebody did think that you said shit. Yes. You shouldn't but should you, on yourself. You shouldn't shit on yourself either. Because you know, that's nasty. S-H-O-U-L-D. You shouldn't should on yourself. And that's true. We say, I should do, oh, I should do this. I should do that. And I mean, I... I believe all this stuff that we say to my very core and still I have this like constant little grinding voice in the back of my head going, you know, Missy, you should really do that. You should really take care of that, Missy. You should. And you can't do that to yourself and pursue what is yours to pursue. So, well, And we're talking about social shoulds, I guess, yes. where society is like has certain expectations from us as individuals and and well, just the keeping up with the joneses you were talking about victorian times <laughs> earlier well, yeah today. i mean yeah because we were talking about you know rights for women or vote, voting for women and that whole thing was victorian times and they were they had these terrible and they i mean and the world still has terrible social structures um you know caste systems or what what have you and the victorian times had this terrible 
social structure, even here in America. And all of that really came crumbling down, to be quite honest, when we stopped drinking or stopped, when the laws told us we couldn't drink. And then everybody just went ape shit and said, <laughs> we are going to drink and, and we're just going to tear all this social crap to pieces so that we can drink with I don't know. But anyway <laughs> But anyway, in, in a lot of ways, you know, prohibition did bring us the society that we have being not as socially structured as it was at one time. But we still have a lot of social expectations put on us and some of that stuff is just chains for our creative soul. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we have done a terrible job, and I, I will always say this probably in every podcast, <laughs> but the education system that we have is a horrible system for raising children. And it does not encourage creativity. It does not encourage love. It does not encourage unity. The whole structure itself, every single piece of it, encourages separation you know, and we wonder why we have such a bullying problem. We have a bullying problem because we don't have we don't structure our education system to look more family oriented. We age segregate and then we have these horrible hallways that <laughs> people can get beat up in the hall because everybody's gotta go to the locker between class. I mean, we could totally rethink all of that. Yeah. And and, and I could go on forever. And, and he has. I'd like to say he's got detailed plans. <laughs> if anyone needs go them, on and on I've heard and them. On. They're good. And they're good. <laughs> Someone needs to get get you a job position of redesign. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. System of I don't America. know how that happens. But anyway, I would be all over that if if that was something that you know somebody said. Hey, what, what's your opinion? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. But <laughs> but one of the things that is damaging about our education system is that we do not think early on about how we as individuals can contribute to the world. And so we're always, you know, we ask little kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? But we don't ask little kids, what do you want to contribute when you grow up? Yeah, what do you have to offer? Yeah. Because small children sometimes know exactly what they have to offer. It's like, it's in there. They're just like, well, I want to, you know. Or, or you could just say, what do you want to do? I don't know. I want to... I want to go to the moon. I want to go to the moon. I want to go to Mars or whatever. And it's just like, you know, that and, – and it's like, okay, great. We encourage that sort of thing. But, you know, maybe it's not as, you know, big as I want to go to Mars. Maybe it's I want to help people. Yeah. Or I want to draw or yeah. I want to paint or whatever. You know, I want to dance. And all those things are valuable. But what we tell creative children is, well, you can't make a living at that. Yeah. <laughs> And everything in the education system is geared towards finding that career, finding a way for you to make money instead of finding a way for you to contribute to the world. Yes. And there's a huge difference there. Ideally, if we're contributing, we get you know paid for it, and that's ideal. But we settle most of the time for just having a career yeah. so that we can make money, so that we can pay our bills. We're not thinking early enough. And by the time we do get to like college or whatever, then we're thinking, oh, how am I going to contribute to the world? If well, you're I even doing even that. I don't know that it's done then very often. I mean, I like there is a shift. There's certainly a shift in society's thinking of being contributing members of society. I think 30 years ago, being a contributing member of society meant that, well, I'm part of the Lions Club and I'm this and that. And I know those organizations have done good things. I'm not knocking those organizations, but that is not what we're talking about here. Being a member of the Lions Club is not what this natural thing inside of you was. And so inside every and maybe person... And that, maybe that served at one point in time, the world being structured as it was. Maybe that was a good outlet for people but i don't think that's necessarily true anymore i think most people are doing their socializing in the internet or whatever 
Anyway, but, I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say that inside every person, there is something that they feel they have to contribute to this world that's in them. It's like, well, I have this thing to contribute. The thing is, though, is, is like Sean said, it's like we're not presenting that idea to young children. Well, you've right. got something in you to contribute to the world yeah. that you are uniquely equipped with this gift in you yeah. that is going to make a difference in this world. Well, and, and if we're telling small children that, then they're thinking about that as they grow. They're always like, oh, well, I've, I've got this to offer. Well, yeah. yeah, it instills in them a value in themselves. Yeah. yeah, and Sean touched on this earlier, but kind of what we do is tell them to be practical yeah. with yeah. it. And there's a famous comedian, Eddie Izzard. I'm going to have to completely uh, obliterate his actual quote. But I keep the, yeah, the Why? We're here. explicit. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I don't remember. It's been, oh, okay. it's been oh, a few yeah, years yeah, since yeah. I've seen it, and I couldn't find like a written down version. But uh, basically, he's talking about getting career advice from a school counselor. And I don't remember exactly what he says, but something like, okay, what do you want to do when you grow up? And he's like, oh, I want to go to the moon. And he's like, well, tone it down a little bit. Let's aim for something more re reasonable. He's like, okay, I want to own a shoe store. He's like, well, you're British. Bring it down a little bit. And he's like, <laughs> okay, well, I want to uh, sell this thing. And he's like, well, bring it down a little bit more. He's like, okay, I want to live in a sewer and pour poo all over myself. He's like, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> let's be practical here. And it's just like, it just divulges into this more practical. No more practical. Come on now. Don't dream too big. That's it's like, we really want our kids not to dream big. Yeah. Who's going to be the next president. If we don't always tell our kids be practical about things, who's going to be the next person to go, to go to the moon. If we always tell our kids, be practical. Who's going to invent anything if we tell our kids, be practical? Yes. Well, what it is, is it comes down to there's only a handful of people who, who decide I'm going to be impractical yeah. and yes. do it anyway. Whenever we could have an entire civilization right. shooting big, doing the big dreams, yeah. we could have a society of creative thinkers who are inventing, who are propelling us forward yeah. in technology but we'd have a society of non-thinkers yeah. yeah, because we have a society of people who are willing to just get by, who are right. willing to just get the degree so they can find a simple career and so that they can make an income so they can eat their food and pay their bills. And that's it. And yeah. then they die. Well, I mean, our culture breeds apathy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, look at any dystopian that is based off reality and the directions that we're heading in. Look at even kids movies, Wally. -E. We're, we're all being bred and, and led to this <laughs> thing of not caring and just be sitting around and no longer following any dreams or being a, an individual whatsoever, just being made into these like lab mice yeah. for experimentation. Basically. I mean, look at levels like 1984, brave new world. We're just being dumbed down. Look at anything Brad Ray Bradbury wrote that yeah. it's all saying the same thing. That's where our culture is headed. We just want to be dumbed down and not be an individual. We don't want to have to take responsibility to create things. Yeah. And it's just this divulgent thing. And our country just completely encourages it. And but you are not wired that way. Not, it's like you are not intrinsically yeah. wired that way. So you need to fight against it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. If we all just made that decision to be brave and be courageous mm -hmm. and take that chance. If you just thought about for one minute, I think as a country, we all live our lives in denial of death. Yeah. yeah. We, we refuse to believe <laughs> that we're ever going to die. We're like, I'm alive now. And I'm going to live forever. It's not true. You're going to die and it could happen tomorrow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what you need to do is think about how do you impact this world with your life? Today. What do you do with your life now to change things? Yeah. And that might mean quitting your job. That might mean uh, moving somewhere. That might mean a lot of things. That might mean taking up guitar lessons because you wanted to play the guitar, but you haven't been uh, encouraged enough to get off, off your couch and actually buy a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you just talk about it all day and go, yeah, one day I hope to play the guitar. Do you own one? Well, go out and get one. Yeah. Do anything it takes to get that guitar. Or honestly, it might it might mean getting a job. Cause it some, might mean, yeah. Some people, yes. you know, they're just wasting their life away in front of the couch whenever it's just like, just get a job so you can be active. Yeah. And then your brain will start working because sometimes we just get so lethargic that our brain just shuts yeah, down. Yeah, and yeah. jobs can be stepping stones. You start out with a job just so you can make that little bit of money to right. buy that guitar. Right. Start <laughs> playing those gigs. That job will provide for you until you become big, and then you can make a career out of that. Yeah. You have to have stepping stones and find a place to start, but you, it starts with getting off the couch and caring about your dreams yeah, and realizing caring, that you don't yeah. have forever to follow them. There's this anonymous quote that says, the cost of not following your heart is spending the rest of your life wishing you had. Yeah. And that's not where you want to end up. No. No. 
You don't want to regret the things you didn't do in this life. Do it. <laughs> Get yeah. off your butt. Go do it. Absolutely. Well, I was thinking when you were you guys were talking about going to the moon and all this thing and yeah, just do it and just imagine and just take that chance. And and I was thinking we watched a, a interview um, with Elon Musk. He was being interviewed by Sal Khan at Khan Academy, I guess at their yeah. wherever they work. <laughs> but our kids use Khan Academy for math and it's a great resource. And Sal is rethinking education. And, you know, Elon Musk, it's like, thank God no one told him you can't go to the moon. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's oh, I like think people can... did. But well, just I know. Said, that's, and what, that's what I'm talking that's about. What there's I mean. there's people, people who will just tell say, you. screw you, I'm doing yeah. it anyway. Yeah, well, that's what I really meant. Thank God Elon Musk said, screw you. <laughs> Yeah. And is doing his thing. I want to make a point that regardless of what it is that is in you, it is a valuable contribution. Some people don't recognize that this natural thing in them is anything because it seems like nothing. I know people who really love old people. Every once in a while, there's someone who's just like, I just love old people. I I think they're interesting. I think they're, <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, not everyone does. Not everyone gets that. A lot of people avoid old people. Golly, that's something. I say that to say, look, don't disregard it. There's something that makes you excited. Do not disregard it. Consider it, however small it may be. I've probably shared this before because it's my, one of my very favorite movies and my very favorite scene in the my very favorite movie, which is Stranger Than Fiction. And the character Maggie Gyllenhaal plays becomes a baker, but she started out in law school. And so there's this scene where she's talking about, well, in law school, it was time to study. And I just started realizing, well, we need snacks for studying. And so she, she is baking and she's like, well, she'd make this. And everyone liked my lemon bars and then this and that. And she said, she said, by the end of the semester, she had, I think she says, by the end of the semester, I had 21 study partners and a whole book full of wonderful recipes and a C minus in in my class and she realized that if and the line that i like is it, i just realized if i'm going to change the world i'd have to do it one cookie at a time and i maybe even misquoted it there but yeah, it's such no, a beautiful said. concept because i mean there's things that seem lowly and they're yeah. not it's, it's easy for us to pull out the you know i want to go to the moon and it's like or or even i want to make music or it's you yeah. know these things that seem like big things but i want to make a damn good cookie so you feel loved yeah. <laughs> that matters too yeah, absolutely. and so i just want to encourage you that this is about you believing in yourself yeah. Yeah. and you believing in that little thing that's a spark in you and believing that that spark can ignite and can grow and can burn into this fire that like warms the world. That is what you have in you. And it can be a big, giant, gigantic thing that the world is going to revere and is going to make you famous. Or it can be that there is a whole little community of people that are like, oh my God, do you remember her cookies? And whatever it is, that is valuable. That And that makes a difference in the world. Yeah, and I know what you're probably thinking is that, oh, sure, it's easy for you to say, easy for you to do that, or easy for you to make these big life decisions that follow your dreams, but I have a family to feed, or I have to pay bills, and mm -hmm. all of that. And you may think that we have never experienced that, but from personal experience, a few months ago, I found myself in Utah on vacation with my wife, sitting mm -hmm. at a hot spring, staring at the mountains, and thought to myself suddenly, I'm going to die one day. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't want to die in the job that I have right now. Yeah. I have things that I want to do with my life. Yeah. And I had to make this radical decision and it wasn't an easy decision to make. I'm a very much controlling person when it comes to my finances. I've always been debt free. I've always paid attention to what the money I'm spending and been really sustainable in that and knowing and feeling comfortable and having a certain amount of money in my bank account always so that I feel safe. And over the course of a few months after having that realization, by the time you're hearing this, I won't have a full-time job anymore because <laughs> I put in my notice and I'm getting other sources of income, but they're not steady yeah. and they could go away at any time. I make taking this leap because there's things I want to do with my life because right. I know that one day I will die and I don't want to be working 40 hours a week for some company and not accomplishing something that is in my heart to follow. 
Right. Well, and the thing is, if you cannot wait for the next great opportunity to come knocking at your door, sometimes you have to take that leap of faith and go out there and find it. You yeah. know, and, and and make the opportunity. Make don't, the opportunity. Don't wait for it to knock the, at your door. Yeah. Open your damn door. Go down the street. Yeah. and Knock on its door. <laughs> yeah. And yeah say, well, hey, exactly. <laughs> I'm and, here for you. And if you if you let the world know what you love and what you're into and what you're wanting to change and what you're wanting to do, you will find that people will meet you out there. Yeah. And that the opportunities will come, but they're not going to come if you just sit back and say, "I wish my life had been different." I yeah, wish right. that my life had been more uh, about what I wanted. I wish my career had been more true to who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's like if that if that's you, then go out there and tell people how you feel. Get involved in what you're passionate about, yeah. mm-hmm. and opportunities will meet you. Right. And you might have to take a cut in pay yeah. initially, but make it your mission to get paid for what you love to do. Right. You find yeah. the income. It is there. And you see people getting paid ridiculous amounts of money for doing something completely stupid. If that <laughs> is, Don't call someone's dream stupid. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not just saying. Dream. I'm yeah. just saying, you know, yeah. it's like there's income out there for people who yeah, are know. doing ridiculous uh, things. Yeah. What you would naturally think was a ridiculous thing. It's like, yeah, how much you get paid for that? And <laughs> yeah. well, then people yeah. think, well, maybe I should do that. No, what you should do is go and find what makes you passionate exactly. yeah. do whatever you're good yeah, at don't chase someone else's dreams yeah chase exactly your own dreams. yeah don't chase someone else's dream because they get paid well for it you know <laughs> well, because they like, did that you should go do what you are passionate about i feel like that's kind of what happens in college i mean i think often that's what it, rather than saying what do i have to contribute for to the world what is inside me it's more like oh huh they do that and make that much? Yeah. All right, I could do that. Yeah. And it's like, that's it how we pick our careers. Hmm, be, I, I could guess do that. I'll go to law school. Yeah. And halfway through law school, you drop out and decide to be a baker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's why you have so many people in high-end careers that are miserable. Because yeah. they're in the wrong place. I can't count on both my hands how many people I know who have dropped out midway through college realizing... I don't want to do this. I was only doing this because my parents wanted me to, or I was only doing this because yeah. it seemed like a good career. Or I was only doing this because the world told me that you have to have a degree to do anything in this field. Yeah. And it's just not true. Yeah. Degrees are almost meaningless these days. Yeah. Well, the, the one thing that um, we've obviously touched on with our passion, but we haven't flat out said is if you still are, are like, gosh, I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't really think I have anything like that that you're talking about. about. You can sometimes tell what it is by what makes you mad. (laughs) Whatever pisses you off is probably, you should look at that and say, what can I do to change that? My feelings for other people to find out that someone was discouraged or someone was told they couldn't do something because damn it you can you can do whatever you want don't let other people ruin your life (laughs) and so obviously i'm passionate about that but it does it you, there's something in you that you will get pissed off about for Sean. It's the well for me. Well, I mean, creativity. it's not. It's not the school it's system. Not, I mean, yeah, that makes me mad. But I think what makes me mad more than anything is that they're creative. And we know, we know, we know that children go into school creative, and they come out. There's maybe one out of every. 30 or 40 or whatever even that's remotely even remotely thinks creative. of themselves as a... but every single one of them start off creative yeah. and it makes me angry that somehow we kill the creativity in us in yeah. all of us that's what you know angers me and that we would continue to practice the, this archaic education system the way that it's done that we would continue to do that over and over it's no longer okay for us to produce factory workers whenever Mm -hmm. all the jobs are going to china or india or wherever they're going to other places around the world why are we still producing factory workers we should be producing entrepreneurs we should be producing inventors and creative people yeah and it's okay to have those 
blue collar jobs where you're out there just being part of the workforce yeah. it doesn't mean you can't be creative on the side and right, pursue yeah. your dreams there are going to be people who have to hold down a 40 hour a week job a normal well, and job there are going to be people who enjoy that and there's nothing wrong yeah, with nothing enjoying wrong with that yeah. Yeah. no not at all but it, everyone's going to be different yeah i'm quitting my job that doesn't mean you need to go out and quit your job today yes. i'm not telling you that mm -hmm. i'm telling you to follow your heart and take the leap of wherever it takes you yeah mm -hmm. absolutely well are we ready? There's a Howard Thurman quote. That are, we, I, are we ready for this quote? Are we ready for this quote? Well, we're we ready for the end. Are we done? Because we wanted to end on this. Yeah. I think it's a great one. It says, don't ask what the world needs. And I'm going to talk in the middle of the quote, so I'll go back. Because I think that is what we do. It's like, huh. I mean, you look at the job market. What's the world needing? Oh, we're needing more account executives? All right. I... I was reading something the other day that I in my journal and I had been looking at classified ads and there was like account specialists and I had written oh for the love of god you look at the classified ads and it's like these jobs they have to be killing people with their monotony and <laughs> And if you're an account specialist, I'm sorry. But I wrote, I said, I would like to be an account specialist when I grow up. Said no child ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> find the thing that is what and you actually do some want. People, I, actually, some people love numbers. On yeah. that note, that's what I've done for the past 14 years on the side is accounting and numbers. And I'm really good at it. I don't find like a lot of joy in it. But as a job I get paid for. I enjoy doing it. I yeah. mean, yeah. I, it is probably one of the funner things that I could get paid for uh, awesome. because I'm good at it. I'm good with numbers. I'm, yeah. It's easy to me. It's menial. I can listen to audiobooks while I do it and just <laughs> fade away into this yeah. key typing coma, basically. <laughs> Sounds like hell to me, but I'm glad, I'm glad you like it. So I'll go back to the quote. <laughs> Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Yeah. 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 Oh, and, yeah. And that might be people who like numbers. I mean, we need that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if everybody pursued what they love, all of these things would be taken care of. I mean, because yeah. everybody's made to fulfill their part. Yeah. I think that we all are, you know, contribute our part. And there are people who, who play these roles and it makes them happy and it brings yeah. them joy. And that's great. And I would like to point out, number of people can be creative people. Absolutely. It takes a lot of creativity to figure out that many decimal points past pi. I don't even understand it. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes yeah. a lot of creativity to be a, a real in-depth mathematician. It might not take a lot to do basic addition, but it takes a lot of creativity yeah. to do like really high like trigonometry well, algebra and stuff. how the hell do we get into the moon if we don't have yeah. people doing that that's exactly. not possible yeah. yeah we can sit around all day dreaming about going to the moon and going well if i just get a slingshot and come up with all sorts of weird ways but unless there's a mathematician involved yeah. you're gonna you're die not, you're not gonna get there yeah absolutely well this week i got two people who have listened to the podcast came into our shop in Ooh. Guthrie and it was so cool and one of them speaking of all this she's not a mathematician but she's a chemist and I was yeah. like whoa science because <laughs> <laughs> I don't do science but Chemistry I appreciate it creative scientific yeah. field it has a lot of creativity oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but she's a super creative lady and so I just wanted to say thank you to to you listeners who have been coming to see us in our shop in, in Guthrie, Oklahoma, and encourage anyone who's coming through the state of Oklahoma. Guthrie is an awesome little town, Victorian city, and you should stop by and see us. We're at 116 South 2nd Street, and we have an art gallery and a little market where we sell handmade things. And we just want to thank you so much for listening to us today. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. At Instagram and Facebook, it's Hancock Creative Shop. On Twitter, it's Hancock Creative. And just engage with us. And we want to hear what it is that is beating inside of you. So as you find those things, say, hey, you know, tweet us. Say, just started gardening because I really felt like I'd always wanted to do that. Just let us know what you're starting up. And that is honestly, the pra I don't know what the practical assignment of today would be, today's message. Mostly it would just be to really look into yourself and realize and believe in yourself and, and realize that you do have something to contribute. So tweet us those things and 
Thanks to Vinton at Graphocast.com for recording this and always being so wonderful. You're welcome. (laughs) Always being such a contributing member of this podcast. And also to Gabriel Knight Hancock for the music. You can find his music at Gabriel Knight at Bandcamp. Follow your heart! Yeah! This has been a Graphomania production. If you would like to hear more podcasts, go to graphocast.com. G-R-A-P-H-O-C-A-S-T dot com. Follow us on Twitter at Graphocast and like the Graphomania page on Facebook for news and updates.